Good morning, and uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm uh, so excited to announce that Alberta's government is taking an important step forward in our economic recovery through partnerships with industry, with employers, and with community. And I'm happy to be joined today by one of our partners in the program, Mr. Murray Elliott, who's the president and CEO of Energy Safety Canada. Now, industry leaders and employers like Energy Safety Canada have their fingers on the pulse of Alberta's workforce and are well positioned to identify areas where skills or training are needed, but no workers are currently available for the job. And their perspectives are so important as Alberta continues toward economic recovery. Now, although unemployment statistics are showing that Alberta has recovered all jobs that were lost at the beginning of the pandemic, we continue to face a, a dual challenge of long-term unemployment and labor shortages. Now, to, to address these challenges, Alberta's government has partnered with, uh, uh, with uh, opportunities to fund industry-led projects through the Workforce Partnerships Program. And these grants support economic growth and respond to skills shortages through industry and community partnerships. Proposals for the program were accepted in the fall and 16 projects have now been approved and that's a total of 1.3 million dollars in funding and these projects will help employers find the skilled workers that they need and get Albertans back to work. Nearly one-third of these projects focus on the energy sector, traditionally a, a key sector in Alberta and one of that continues to have great potential. The remaining two-thirds of these projects cover a wide variety of industries, including aviation, technology, retail, truck driving, environmental services, as well as wood manufacturing. Now, together, these projects give Albertans a range of job opportunities and diversify our economy. While having a diverse set of thriving industries, that's important for our recovery here in Alberta, Diversity is, uh, in, in our workforce is, is equally valuable. Albertans from all walks of life will be encouraged to develop new skills with initiatives that focus on hiring diverse employees. For example, a wood manufacturing project will be recruiting women, indigenous peoples, newcomers, mature workers, and youth. Another project will advance diversity, equity, and inclusion in Alberta's growing environmental sector. Now, building a diverse, diverse workforce is also a focus of two projects in the energy and electricity sectors. While focusing on diversity helps build Alberta's workforce, we also need to understand emerging trends in the economy. So additional projects are designed to raise awareness of workforce needs in specific areas or sectors, such as rural Alberta, or um, our uh, supply chain sector and uh, as well our retail sector. Now these projects will begin no later than March 31st of this year and will last from one to two, two years. Thanks to the project leaders for their interest in growing and strengthening Alberta's economy. I'm looking forward to seeing how these projects will help get Albertans back to work and help our economy adapt, grow, and compete on a global sta stage. I'd now like to uh, invite Murray to uh, come up and uh, say a few words. Thank you so much for joining us today, Murray. Thank you, Minister Shandro. I'm very pleased to be here today. Our goal at Energy Safety Canada is to ensure that we have a safe, productive workforce to support the energy industry. We develop health and safety programs and resources dedicated to advance safety in Canada's oil and gas industry. PetroLMI is a division of Energy Safety Canada that develops research, tools, resources to increase awareness and understanding of working in the energy sector and to support attracting and retaining skilled and productive workforce. We are all very optimistic that after years of unprecedented economic uh, restructuring uh, and change, better days are ahead. Alberta's energy industry will be a key contributor to both economic recovery and long-term growth in global energy demand. 
According to the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, capital spending is projected to increase 22% this year. We are seeing growing and emerging sectors in the province, petrochemicals, renewables, and a strong momentum behind development of carbon capture and storage. We're seeing biofuels and other energy sources growing. The International Energy Agency has spoken favorably of Canada, sees a strong need for our country to be an oil and gas supplier of choice into the future. It's all welcoming news and an important opportunity to find, train, upskill, and reskill the best and the brightest our country has to offer. In doing so, industry will benefit tremendously by building a diverse workforce. Industry needs a workforce that brings new ideas, new approaches, and different competency to support both our traditional oil and gas as well as the emerging energy uh, sectors. We look forward to this opportunity to work with the Government of Alberta and our partners on this initiative. Thank you. I'll pass it back to Minister Shandro. Thank you very much. Uh, for those on the line, uh, just a reminder to press star one uh, if you have a question for either the minister uh, or Mr. Elliott. Uh, and on that uh, note, we'll uh, have uh, the, the operator put through the first uh, question. Carly Robinson, City News. Hi there. My first question is uh, for uh, Murray Elliott. I'm just hoping you could sort of give an illustration. When we're talking about gaps in the workforce, who are the workers we have versus who are the workers we need when it comes to the energy sector? When you're talking about this shift in the economy, what are the skills that are needed? What's the shift that we need in this workforce? It's, it's a really great question, and it's, it's a really diverse uh, need for, for employment. Right now, what we're seeing is that uh, we're at, at only 3% uh, um, unemployment in Alberta. It's, that starts to become a tight labor force. And so there's areas like the, the services and drilling sector that are a key economic part of the capital investment that we're, we're starting to run short of uh, workers. Or, importantly, we're, we're, we're losing some of the skilled workers that we lost through the last down cycle. So there's a number of those sectors, but also our, our industry is evolving and changing. Digital transformation is everywhere. The real drive to reduce our, our carbon intensities in industry means that we need a whole host of different skills. Uh, a lot of folks from the, uh, um, the science, technology, engineering, uh, math, STEM uh, type trained folks as well. So it's really, it, it's a gap about everything. It's about reskilling and attracting the best and the brightest. Uh, thank you, do you have a follow up? Uh, yeah, for the, the minister, I was just Hoping to, to circle back to the, the job numbers that we saw earlier in the week uh, that, I mean, they did show there is that less unemployment, but it's also less full-time job and more part-time jobs than that, and just wanting to get his perspective on that. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, it's fantastic that we do see signs of recovery throughout the province. We see um, uh, increase in our employment rate. We do see decreases in our unemployment rate, but the, I, I, I think we also have to keep an eye on certain segments, uh, geographically and demographically, of the, uh, the unemployed. Uh, for example, indigenous women, uh, newcomers, young men, and some of the high unemployment rates that we still see there. So um, I know you're asking in particular about um, uh, casual and part-time numbers increasing uh, disproportionately, but it's uh, it's uh, the bigger picture about having still many parts of the, the segments of the population that are not finding attachment to jobs. I think we also have concerns with the, the number of people who are long-term unemployed uh, in the, the province, so people who have been unemployed for longer than, um, than 27 weeks. And, and in fact, even people who have been unemployed uh, for more than 52 weeks, for an entire year. Um, and, and the barriers that those folks are, are going to face in trying to come back into the job market. And so we do have to do quite a bit as a government to, to helping those people overcome those barriers because you know the, the Alberta Chamber of Commerce is reporting that half of our businesses in the province are having vacancies that are the, they have difficulty filling. So it's about making sure that we're supporting employers, employing, um, and, and supporting uh, those who are, are underemployed or unemployed, un underemployed as you pointed out, and being able to, to find the, those attachments to, to long-term employment in the, the province. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, operator, please put through the next caller. Josh Aldridge, Post Media. 
<clears throat> Good morning, Minister. Uh, I was just wondering, with all this funding and these programs, do you have an estimate on how many uh, potential jobs this could lead to or uh, employment for people? To, are there specific numbers that we're looking at uh, through this funding and this, these projects? Um, no, I think that's something we could uh, definitely be able to uh, provide you with um, some better guidance with uh, 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 perhaps later on, but I don't think we have that number at this time. Now, now that we're announcing these partnerships, the the 1.53 million that we're we're providing to to these partners, um, but at this time we don't have a specific number of, of jobs that we're we're targeting with this. I think the, the great opportunities though for us to work with these these partners, community employers, industries, to uh, to be able to start making some some work and to uh, not even just filling the vacancies that some employers are having difficulty in filling, but also uh, overcoming some of our underemployment and, and, and long-term unemployment in the province. Uh, follow with up? These, yeah. uh, with these different projects, <clears throat> was there an underlying theme that was, because uh, we see these shortages right across the spectrum, whether it's uh, supply chain or retail or energy, was there an underlying theme to the cause of these shortages for jobs, especially when we still have, uh, relative to pre-pandemic, uh, fairly high unemployment numbers? Is, is there a reason why we're still seeing those, those gaps in the workforce when we still have relatively high unemployment? It's a variety, a uh, variety of reasons. We, we have seen a lot of folks who, uh, throughout the pandemic, have decided to, to move to employment in a different sector, which have left vacancies in the sector that they left. Um, there have been quite a few people who have retired in the province. Um, and as well, as Murray pointed out, we've had workers over the last, say, six, seven years who might have left a sector like the energy sector and, uh, and those skills. And, um, and, and so now, now that the, the recovery is, is happening in a sector like that in, in the province, that many of those skills aren't there now in the province. Um, we also see just um, some barriers that the underemployed and the unemployed right now in the province have faced over the last two years and even before, even going back to 2015. So it's, uh, it's a variety of, of factors that have, have led to, to these situations. Um, and so that's why um, our response as government and working with partners like, like industry and, and employers has got to be multifaceted. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, operator, can you please put through the next caller? Catherine Grigowski, Alberta Today. Thanks for taking my question. Good morning. Um, I, it, this says this is a partnership with the federal government, and I'm wondering what's the breakdown between provincial funding and federal funding for this announcement? For this announcement for the 1.53? Um, I, I actually would have to get back to you on that. I mean, I know that the, much of our um, LMTA and uh, WDA funding, uh, the majority, majority of that does come from the federal government, um, but the extent to which uh, this is funded through the, uh, the labor market uh, transfer agreements with the federal government, um, I would have to get back to you on. And, so, and this is not, not the first round of, of funding. Um, is, is there anything that you've learned from the previous rounds? Have you tweaked the program, or is it pretty much the same as it's been since the first 2019 round? Oh, great question. Uh, so there, there have been tweaks in just being able to get further feedback from employers um, and, and industries about, um, in particular, um, when, when we're looking to diversify and when we're looking to um, help the underemployed and unemployed overcome barriers, um, how we can continue to target. So we have seen over the last two years in particular, um, as, as we see, jobs recovering in the province and we see our employment uh, increasing in the province, we do, still do see um, high unemployment numbers for, for example, Indigenous uh, folks, for women, uh, for young men. And so being able to, to work with employers and, and industries and, and targeting um, those folks who are still seeing high uh, unemployment numbers um, is, uh, is how we've been able to, to make further tweaks in, in working with these, uh, these partners. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Operator, can you please put through the next caller? Lisa Johnson, Edmonton Journal. Hi, thanks for taking my question. This is for Minister Shandra. I'm wondering if you can tell, like, I see that this is kind of like a mixed bag of grants to various um, businesses and organizations, and I'm wondering how you would differentiate this from the Jobs Now program, for example, which is focused on training and, and getting rehires. How is this... Um, 
how is this needed above and beyond that? Well, the so the, the Jobs Now program, I mean, you're, they're, they're similar to the extent that they're both grants. Um, they're, they're similar to that some of these grants are going to employers. Um, but the, the Jobs and the Jobs Now grant did um, have opportunities for an employer to seek an, an increase in funding of their grant if the employee they're proposing to hire um, was uh, somebody who was overcoming a, a disability. Um, but uh, this, this is, I mean, Jobs Now program was a, a grant for an employer to, to hire and train a particular employee and going through particular uh, criteria for that to apply. These are opportunities for, for us, I suppose, in, in a more robust way to, to seek partnerships with these employers um, in particular and how they're proposing to, to help um, the underemployed and unemployed in the province overcome some of their barriers. So, um, I mean, they're, they're, I think you're correct in pointing out that they're both grants and some of them are going to employers, but just more robust ways for us to work with these uh, partners. Excellent. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah, sure. So it, just to be clear, there is no hiring quota requirement tied, tied with these grants. No, the, the, the Alberta Jobs Now was a grant for a particular employee. These are opportunities for us to work with these employers in, in developing these um, uh, opportunities to, to overcome some of these barriers and, uh, and to increase the diversity in, in their hiring. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, operator, can you please put through the next caller? Tom Vernon, Global News. Hi, Minister. Thanks for taking my question. I, I want to ask about the Jobs Now program. Uh, the Business Council of Alberta has put out a report uh, recommending it actually be um, uh, transitioned and, and altered quite significantly and actually turning into a, a purely a wage subsidy program. Uh, have you seen this report, and, and are you considering making changes uh, as recommended by the Business Council? We'll start with the last question. We, we definitely are looking at changes to the third tranche. Um, it was in, um, in September to, to November in, in working with employers um, and those who had applied in particular, um, but then weren't, uh, after they were approved, weren't actually able to fill that position with a, an eligible employee and being able to work with those employers and uh, changing some of the criteria for that second tranche. And, and when we announced the second tranche, we made it clear that there would be further, uh, a third tranche of the, the program and that there would be uh, changes. And we'd be happy to, to continue to work with employers and uh, organizations like the Business Council to, to get their feedback. Um, or the, the CFIB has also been helpful in um, providing us feedback on behalf of their members. And so we'll, we'll continue to get that feedback. Um, we're happy to get the, um, uh, the feedback from the BCA uh, to the extent to which we're going to uh, make any changes at this time. I, I'm, I'm not ready to, to make any pre, pre-announce any um, changes to the, the eligibility criteria, but uh, do, do agree that uh, we do need to continue to be dynamic with the criteria to respond to the needs of employers. So there will be a third tranche and there will be changes to it. Thanks. Uh, Tom, do you have a follow-up? I guess just specifically on the wage subsidy side of things, like what do you make of that idea? Do you think that could be, obviously it was a, a big uh, program federally, but do you, do you see Alberta playing a role in a wage subsidy type program? Well, I think we're going to continue to focus on the, um, the un unemployed in particular you know, in the third tranche. Um, to the extent that this um, is transitioned to a wage subsidy, um, I, I, as I said, I'm, I'm happy to get that feedback from the, the Business Council of Alberta, but not uh, prepared to, um, uh, you know, we're still looking at it and still analyzing it and still making decisions on how we can continue to um, uh, make changes to the eligibility criteria for the Alberta Jobs Now program. That's going to be continue to be our focus in using the Alberta Jobs Now program in, in addressing unemployment, long-term unemployment in particular in the province, and so that, that's got to continue to be our, our focus. So not, not prepared to make any uh, announcements related to our, our take on, on a wage subsidy at this time. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe we have time for one more caller. Uh, operator, please put through the, the last call. Chris Barco, Calgary Herald. Hi, this is a question for Minister Shandro. Uh, Minister, as, as Minister in Charge of Labour and Immigration, what are you hearing from labour groups and from employer groups about the province lifting the pandemic restrictions, including the restrictions exemption program? Well, um, it, first of all, um, I, I have been uh, getting feedback from both employer groups and uh, from um, our public sector and private sector unions. 
um, continue to be able to provide that feedback uh, to the, the Minister of Health and, um, and um, but I think with the focus on that being feedback for the Minister of Health to be taking into consideration for the recommendations that, that he brings uh, to the Cabinet COVID uh, Committee for consideration by that committee. Um, and uh, I think many of those, those groups have, have made their, their positions known. It's a variety of positions that, um, that these organizations take, uh, both collectively but also within their groups. Um, because that, that is a state of affairs with COVID throughout the last uh, two and a half years in this province, that uh, Albertans have uh, a variety of, uh, of opinions on, and, and including with the, the REP program. So um, I think the, the Minister of Health has continued to get that feedback from these groups. Um, I've assisted them in getting that feedback to the Minister of Health, and uh, I look forward to him being able to, um, uh, I guess, Provide provide those opinions uh, through his recommendations to the cabinet COVID committee. Thanks, Chris. Do you have a follow up? Yes. You say you're getting a variety of opinions. I guess how do you balance the concerns of people who want to see the uh, the program, the REP program, removed uh, swiftly versus those who are concerned that we're moving it removing it too quickly? How do you balance those two uh, different kind of positions? Well, I think as any decision throughout the last two and a half years with, uh, with, with, um, uh, with, with COVID, any, any decision, there's been a variety of opinions and, and every one of those decisions has been difficult to be able to balance. Um, the, the variety of opinions and the incredibly diverse opinions that Albertans, Albertans have had regarding all those measures. So uh, I think it's the same thing uh, for, for me, because I think you're asking how I balance that. Um, at no longer being the, the Minister of Health, uh, it is now something for, for Minister Copping to be balancing when he takes uh, into consideration the advice that he's getting from his public health officials uh, and developing recommendations that he takes to the Cabinet COVID Committee for their consideration. Uh, but uh, it's, it's going to be, I assume, for, for that committee and for him, uh, the same as it's been through the, the pandemic. And it, it is has been difficult and will continue to be difficult to, to balance those diverse opinions of Albertans. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes uh, today's press conference. Uh, have yourselves a great day. Thank you, everyone.